Thanks for joining us for another daily devotion. Today we're in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Now as we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, it's really a continuation of chapter 11 where Paul defends his apostleship. And what Paul does in chapter 12 is really open the door for the Corinthians to see why Paul's ministry looks the way it does. Because Paul had received a lot of criticism, especially from the church and especially from the false teachers who came in. And so Paul's ministry it really didn't look impressive. It really didn't look like anything that was special. And so Paul reminds them of why his ministry is what it is. And he really shows them that they had misjudged him and rather than acknowledging him uh, and affirming him as an apostle and as a leader of the church and someone to be uh, valued and listened to. Um, he reminds them that, hey, you guys have misjudged me, but I've demonstrated to be a true apostle. And so as we look at this, we see that Paul continues to uh, defend his apostleship. We see in chapter 12, in verse 1, he says, boasting is necessary, though it is not profitable. So Paul is saying, hey, uh, I'm going to have to boast about myself. I'm going to have to um, remind you of my credentials. This was not something that Paul was eager to do. This wasn't something that he did with the churches, but he was in a position that uh, they they were not listening to him, and false teachers were criticizing him, and they were just trashing Paul. And so Paul is at the point where he says, I, I need to remind you of my credentials. And this is something that Paul did not want to do, and yet he needed to do. And he said, um, but I will go on. I'm going to I'm going to defend myself. He says I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago whether in the body I do not know or out of the body I do not know. God knows such a man was caught up into the third heaven. And I know how such a man whether in the body or apart from the body I do not know. God knows was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words which a man is not permitted to speak. On behalf of such a man, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except in regard to my weaknesses. So Paul reminds him, he, he says, yeah, I know a man that was taken up to, to heaven, to the third heaven. You think about uh, what Paul is saying here, I, I thought there was only one heaven. Well, when we think about the heavens, we could be talking about three different things. We could be talking about the first heaven, which is the atmosphere. This is where airplanes and helicopters and birds fly. And then the second heaven would have been space, uh, the sun and the moon, the planets and deep space. And then the third heaven is God's dwelling. And Paul says, I know a man who was taken up to the third heaven. He was taken up to, to see things that are inexpressible, things that man is not permitted to share. We know later on that Paul's talking about himself because he lets the cat out of the bag. And he says, because in verse 7, because I've heard these, uh, these great revelations, because God has revealed uh, this to me, uh, the Lord is going to uh, keep me from exalting myself. And so Paul later on in the chapter, lets us know that he's talking about himself. So Paul reminds them, he says, you know, I was taken up to heaven, and God revealed these things to me, things that I'm not allowed and permitted to share with you. And so, you know, Paul is defending, saying, hey, I, I have special revelation from the Lord, right? The, the false apostles and the false teachers, they didn't have revelation from God, but Paul says, I got to go to heaven and so he's reminding them, and he says, but I'm not going to boast in these revelations. What I am going to boast on is my weaknesses. And what Paul is doing is saying that he is an apostle, that he had special revelation from the Lord. He doesn't boast in that, but he's going to boast in his weaknesses. And he opens the door to help them see, you know, why did Paul have the problems and the hardships that he had. This was one of the criticisms that the church had, is why does Paul have so many problems? And really the implication of the false teachers that were bringing these uh, accusations against Paul, the idea was if Paul was such a great guy, if he really was from God, if he was really an apostle, he wouldn't have all the problems that he had. It's kind of the same idea that Job's friends had. You know, Job, you're suffering because you're really not a godly man. And that's what the church was tempted to think. And Paul says, you want to know why I have these problems? Well, because God took me to heaven and I got to see these things. And to keep from exalting myself, 
there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. This is why I have these problems. If you look down in verse 7, Paul explains his weaknesses. He says, but because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me and to keep me from exalting myself. So Paul had suffering. He had suffering, physical suffering that he had. This was a messenger of Satan. And Paul goes on and he says, three times I implored the Lord, I begged the Lord, take this from me. But the Lord's response was, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ, which dwells in me. So Paul is saying, you know, the reason why I have these problems is because of the greatness of the revelations that God gave to me. He entrusted me with this truth and it would be tempting to exalt myself, to boast in myself, but God in his grace to keep me from exalting myself has allowed this thorn in the flesh. So Paul opens the door to the reality of his life, why he has the problems that he has, why he suffers the way he does. And he says, it's because God is keeping me from exalting myself because if it wasn't there, the temptation would be to exalt myself. And so Paul's suffering and Paul's hardship, it wasn't that he, it wasn't because he didn't have much to offer, it's because he had so much to offer as an apostle. And yet God was protecting him and keeping him from exalting himself. You know, Paul, he says, I am well content in verse 10 with the weaknesses and with insults and distresses and with persecutions and difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. And you see the godliness of Paul where he says that I'm, I'm content, content to suffer these things. I, I suffer weakness, the, the weakness that he had in his own flesh and the sufferings that he had. He, he suffered the insults from the false teachers and from those in the church that were critical of him. Uh, he suffered persecution from unbelievers and just the overall difficulties of serving Christ. And he says, but I, I am content because when I'm weak, then I'm strong. What Paul is doing, he, he's saying, my weakness is not a symptom of ungodliness. My weakness and the sufferings that I endure is really a, a symptom of God's work in my life. It's really a symptom of being a true apostle. And really what Paul is, is doing here is without saying, um, I suffer this way because uh, God has exalted me. It's really the same teaching that, that Jesus said, whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. And so the, the people in Corinth and, and the Christians, they looked at Paul and they wrongly judged him. They, they said, oh, man, he's suffering. He's got all this weakness. He has all these problems, and it's because he's not that great. He's not a great leader. He's not a, a great uh, teacher, and, uh, and they misjudged him. And Paul says, this is why my ministry is the way it is, is because God is keeping me from exalting myself. Paul goes on to help them understand that they had misjudged him because they looked at Paul and, and they said he's just he's so unimpressive he's so humble he's you know he's he's meek when he comes to us and Paul says um you know you you guys are not seeing my ministry for what it really is if you look down at verse 11 he says I've become foolish uh you yourselves compelled me actually you should have recommended or actually, I should have been commended by you, for no respect was I inferior to the most eminent of the apostles, even though I am nobody. The signs of a true apostle were performed among you with all perseverance by signs and wonders and miracles. Paul says, I'm, I'm boasting. I shouldn't have to boast. You guys are the ones that should be boasting of my credentials. But you guys... Look at my ministry, even though you've seen the way I've served among you, and rather than, than seeing me as an apostle, you guys are forcing me to uh, commend myself to you and to prove my apostleship to you. And he says, but you guys have seen the signs of a true apostle. 
when I went to you, when I planted the church, and as I ministered among you. He says, for in what respect were you treated as inferior to the rest of the churches? And Paul, here, here's where Paul says, you guys have really misjudged me because you've looked at, at my uh, weakness, you've looked at my suffering, you've looked at the hardships that I've endured, and, and you look at me as less, but I've endured those hardships for your benefit. I've done it for you. And really, in reality, you should, you should look at me with appreciation and say, wow, Paul has really served us, and Paul has really been a true spiritual leader along the lines of what Jesus described as a true leader. And so Paul says, how did I treat you as inferior? He says that there's one way. There's one way that I treated you as inferior. And he says, in this that I did not become a burden to you. Forgive me of this wrong. And you say, what, like, what do you mean? How did, how did Paul not become a burden? Well, Paul, he, he, he carried his own load, and he worked his way. He supported himself. He didn't allow them the blessing of supporting him. And he says, I, I basically robbed you of that blessing. Forgive me. But I want you to know why I did that. You see, the false teachers, they looked at the churches and saying, hey, we want the churches to support us. We want to receive from uh, the churches. And Paul was unwilling to do that. He wanted to work his own way. He wanted to support, support himself. Even though he had the right to be supported by the churches, he didn't want to be a burden to them. And so the people misunderstood that. And they said, oh, if he doesn't want to take you know, any support from us, he, might not, he must not be worth his salt. And so Paul, he corrects their misperception of him. And you see that in verse 14. He says, here for this third time, I'm ready to come to you. And I will not be a burden to you, for I do not seek what is yours, but I seek you. Paul's saying, hey, I'm coming to you, and I'm not going to be a burden to you. I'm not going to expect you to support me. And, and he points to the analogy of parents and their children. Look what he says. He says, for children are not responsible to save up for their parents, but the parents are to save up for their children. And I will most gladly spend and be expended for your souls. See, the people, they looked at Paul and they said, how come he won't, he, he, he won't uh, be supported by the churches? Maybe the churches don't want to support him. Maybe he's not worth the salt. Paul says, no, like I'm willing to come to you and minister to you at my own expense and sacrifice for you. And they had misjudged him. They thought he wasn't worthy of respect and he wasn't worthy of honor. He wasn't worthy of their support and pay. But Paul says, I did this for you because I'm like, I'm like a parent to you. And I'm supporting you. And I'm willing to suffer and endure for you. And so in this chapter, Paul really opens up his life to them. And he says, the reason why I have these problems and the reason why I have all of these things is not because I'm somehow less. But... These are the ways that I have sacrificially served you and served the Lord. You know, I think about a, a story that my uncle would tell us that uh, he, uh, he grew up around the farms and he talked about the sunflowers. You know, you get the sunflower seeds, you go to the baseball game or you, yeah, just some people like to eat sunflower seeds. And he said you could look in the field and you could tell which sunflowers have the most seeds. And he said they're the ones that are hunched over. It's like they, they can't even look up to the sun anymore because they have so much fruit and they have so much seed there that the stock can't support it. And so they're just kind of hunched over and they look kind of pitiful. But then you look at other sunflowers and they're standing tall and proud, you know, and facing the sun. It's because they don't have any substance to them. And so the people, they looked at Paul, and they, they looked at his humility, they looked at his weakness, they saw that he was unimpressive, he had all these problems, and they said, oh, he doesn't have anything to offer. But in reality, he had the most to offer. He was a true apostle, enduring all of these things, and so he gives them a glimpse of the suffering in his ministry, and that he was worthy to be listened to, because he was chosen by God appointed by Christ as an apostle to minister to that church. And so we see this in Paul. We see his humble leadership and his strength and his leadership. And it's easy to uh, misjudge a book by its cover. And that's what the Corinthians were doing. And Paul reminds them, you need to trust him. You need to trust me. You need to listen to me because I've been called to minister to you.
Well, I hope this sheds light on the chapter. Go ahead and read through it yourself and do your own study, and we'll see you next time. God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you.